So the next possibility is that Jesus did rise from the dead. And it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense why Peter was a coward one minute and bold the next. It makes sense they put Mary as the first witness because she just was. It happened. It makes perfect sense the disciples did not believe Jesus rose from the dead as they were crushed by Jesus' death and were not expecting anything. Mark is just telling us what really happened. Now you might say miracles do not happen, but that is a philosophical argument. A philosophical argument that, if it be honest, doesn't, does not know, you know, at the here's a point, this is not in my lecture, but I'm going to just fill this out a little bit in detail. But if you say that miracles cannot happen, that is a philosophical argument, not a historical argument. And that philosophical argument is, is based on uniformity of nature because nature is uniform and we don't see miracles happening anyway. The possibility of a miracle happening is just virtually impossible. But if we look at the quantum level of nature beyond the quantum level, we don't know how nature interacts and matter interacts with each other. There's a point at which we do not know. And so, therefore, it is possible that something breaks into nature that we have not understand, which goes beyond the quantum level. And so, therefore, we should be open to the possibility of a miracle. Now, you might say, well, a miracle is a supernatural event, but I would define a miracle as a sign. And so, there's an important distinction there. And a miracle as a sign, it is possible that something within nature has happened, taken place, that is gone beyond the, it is beyond the quantum level of matter, that we don't understand, that breaks into our history and is a sign. And the only possible way that you can assess that is by looking at the historical data, not arguing from a philosophical point of view. And it's interesting to note that there's only one person in history who's ever really honestly tried to investigate miracles in a, in a real honest way with a criteria for assessing miracles and that is David Hume. When David Hume assessed the miracles of the time of Pascal, he, he, had about, he had five to seven criteria of assessing miracles and when he assessed the miracles uh, amongst the French Catholics of Pascal's time, he found that the French Catholics' miracles actually fulfilled his criteria, but yet nobody became, uh, Hume did not believe in miracles, even though the miracles fitted his criteria. The point that I'm trying to make is if you're going to disprove miracles, you've got to disprove it on historical grounds. But not nobody since Hume has ever any atheist has ever come up with a criteria for assessing miracles. So there's a disingenuousness there from skeptics. They say that miracles don't happen but they have not got the intellectual tools and criteria for assessing miracles on historical grounds. That's not in my lecture but I've just unpacked it a little bit more. Uh, I'll just write that down. Unpack. All right. I might have to put that in a bit, no. Um, if you want details on that, go to Dr. Gary Habermas, PhD, uh, on his website, and look at his PhD, and he goes into David Hume uh, there at great length. <laughs> um, so, the argument from miracles can't happen is a philosophical argument and we are dealing with historical data and if you're going to defeat what I have to say you have to defeat it on historical grounds. Now you might say there are contradictions in the gospel accounts but you have to face the fact that all the gospels agree to the main facts I have just pointed to and to what modern scholarship points to. Minor contradictions if you can find them do not overturn one big the big facts that we know. Um, I'll put that in. Plausibility structure. Plausibility structure. If we're making a scientific theory, 
if we have a good plausibility structure, stru uh, if we have good a good plausibility structure, i.e., that we have good solid evidence for the main foundations of the scientific theory, then then we're not going to abandon that theory if we've got minor contradictions within that theory. Okay, that just doesn't happen, and you're going to get minor contradictions and anomalies within your scientific theory. But if you've got big evidence structures for your your theory, then you've got a good plausibility structure. We, in this case, have good, solid evidence for the big facts 